Hello. Welcome back to my haunted library. It's Regina. So it's been a while since I made a video. It's been a couple weeks and I usually don't let that much time slide by. And uh, I miss you guys. So here I am. Lily's on set today. She's got her new sweater. <laughs> it's getting cold outside. So I love it. I really love the winter months, at least at this point. Ask me again in March and I'll have a different story. But as we're moving toward the Christmas season. I'm really feeling it. So we are now leading it to the holiday season, which I really enjoy. So I have some things planned. One reason why I've just been so busy is just work. And also speaking of the cold and winter months, I've been working on Served Cold, the new horror tube anthology, which is coming out December 11th in print, just like this. And although without this thing on it, and ebook, which you can pre-order now. I'll have all the links below. And I'm really enjoying working on the story. So I've just been busy with that. And what else? Oh, have I been reading? No, I've been doing NaNoWriMo. That's the other thing that's been keeping me busy. I'm about 10,000 words away. I've got a couple days left. I think I'm gonna make it this time. I have been uh, keeping up with my blog posts, which I have been uh, writing about my NaNoWriMo experience. I'll link those below too, if you're interested. So I had planned to read all these extreme horror books during the month of October. And here it is almost the end of November. And I only read two books and I started a third book, but this is what I read. At least I read something. And that was, uh, I finally read The Cipher by Kathy Koja. This book was awesome. Um, my friend Alex over at the Bookubus has been recommending this book for years. I had bought the Kindle copy and I just never got around to reading it. And then I bought this, I think I found this at Pal's Bookstore. So once you have the physical book, it's like a reminder to read it. So I finally read it and I loved it. I absolutely loved this book. It was so unique and Kathy Koja's voice uh, was so poetic. I think that she's an artist and that really shows. Juan over at Plagued by Visions had her in his live stream and I was so impressed by that. Uh, she. She came off during that live stream as cool as I thought she would be just from reading her book. This book, if you don't know, it's kind of like a, a I would say it's like a quintessential kind of 90s book along with uh, like a Poppy C. Bright. It, it's definitely in that realm of creepy art school <laughs> kind of horror. In fact, it reminded me of my art school days when I was living um, with my then boyfriend, uh, now my husband, in this old ramshackle house that we rented in Oregon Hill in Richmond, Virginia, which was this very kind of poor neighborhood. I don't know if it's changed much, but we rented a whole house for $100 a month and we shared it. We split it three ways. And I'm sure there were some fun holes in that house, just saying. But, um, yeah, it, it reminded me of that, but in the darkest possible way, because the two uh, characters, Nicholas and Nakota, I think, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name right, are kind of art art school dropout kind of losers in a, in a complete place of negativity, like self-loathing just seeps from the pages of this book. And it's, it's kind of a simple concept where this hole is discovered in this apartment building where uh, Nicholas lives. And I think Nakota just kind of hangs out there. She's really got his, you know what, in a sling throughout this entire book. And he comes off as such um, a wimp, kind of a, a, a love struck. If, I don't know if you'd even call it love. It's the, the, the darkest type of love, obsession, a sexual obsession. But there are some twists and turns, which I won't give away, but it, it's a, it, it feels so visceral, this story. But anyway, this, this hole is discovered in like a little room, like a utility closet, I, I think. It's been a few weeks since I read it. And it's discovered that uh, through experimentation that if you put something in the hole, like the first thing is an insect, comes out transformed into some monstrous thing. So if you would put your dip, your body parts in the hole, like your hand, similar things would happen. And the hole becomes, you know, its own monster 
the elephant in the room that can't be avoided. It's metaphor for these empty lives of these two characters. It's interesting reading the review reviews for this because some people really hated the characters so much and they're kind of despicable people that they couldn't get into it. I've never had a problem with those types of characters and I, you know, I'm not saying I relate to them, but you know, I, I don't have a problem with a uh, flawed despicable characters as long as they have enough humanity that make them relatable. And I found these characters did. It's great. It's great. I really feel like this is a book that I would read again and again. And I really enjoyed seeing Will Erickson's blurb in the front. He's, um, He's very good. So I'm just going to read. He's a very good writer. Will Erickson is one of the contributors for Paperbacks from Hell, along with Grady Hendrix. Okay, here we go. Uh, when I first read The Cipher in 1991, I hardly knew what to make of it. But I knew one thing for sure. Horror fiction had never seen anything like Kathy Coge's obsessive and impressionistic prose and ruthlessly dire worldview before. Koja's fearless depiction of bickering 20-something art failures, stumbling upon an actual nothing, and then watching with detached fascination as the, their squalid lives disintegrate around it was the darkest kind of revelation for me. I haven't stopped thinking about the cipher in that 30 years since, and my numerous reads of it always yield fresh new horrors from its reflective depths. That's a really nice description. And I agree completely. I'm going to link uh, a couple reviews below the, uh, the bookish report, Alex, and then Alex from the Bookubus, two separate channels uh, below. And I think their takes on this book are really worth checking out. So yes, I'm so glad I read this. I will read it again. The other book I read was House of Pain by Sephora Jerome. This is a leisure book that came out in 2001. She has a YouTube channel that I will link below. She talks about writing and stories, and she also does like tarot card readings and astrology and this kind of thing, if you're interested, which I am. So I highly recommend her stuff. So this book had its fun moments, but overall, I think it kind of lacked a cohesive story, but I enjoyed it. So if, if that makes sense, I, I don't know. I don't like to give star ratings for books anymore. I would just say, I would give this maybe two and a half, three stars. It's not a great book, so I don't want to recommend it. Like, like It's not like Kathy Coach's book. But it had its interesting moments, and I think that she is a talented writer and very imaginative. So it's about this um, these young boys who stumble upon this house of horrors where this horrible like crimes, uh, serial killers lived, and the house is demolished, but the evil remains. And then the boys grow up and one kind of becomes this like uh, kind of this like crazy hermit who lives in the woods, who uh, does all this ritualistic magic. I found his character very interesting. And then the other boy grew up to become successful and buys the house and has it re, uh, rebuilt on the site of the old demolished house. And he brings with him his beautiful bride and of course, bad things happen. So uh, yeah, so th that's pretty much basically the plot, which is a great idea. And it, like I said, it has its moment. It's, it has, um, it kind of reminds me of Flesh Gothic by Edward Lee a, a bit. It has some very explicit, you no know, sexually explicit scenes, which of course don't bother me. I just wish the story had just held together a little more, if that makes sense. But I would definitely read another book by her. And I like her spirit and I like her attitude that comes off on her YouTube channel. So I would check out her work again anytime. And then I started reading, just started reading a book called Feral. And I forget who the authors are. And so far it's good, but I've read like the first chapter, so I can't really talk about it. So my reading hasn't been that uh, on uh, point. I did go to see uh, Dune. My husband and I went on the best time to see a movie, which is on a Monday afternoon when the theater was empty. We sat in one of those, you know, front rows on the second level with the reclining seats and everything. And uh, yeah, we had a great time. I thought the movie was fantastic. I had read Dune again this summer, so I read it twice. I thought it, it did a beautiful job sticking to the story. It added some new things or some, some different interpretations, but not enough to, to make me think, oh, this isn't the Dune from the book. It, it just, it was great. It was beautiful, stunning story and my husband, who had not read the book, but had maybe seen the David Lynch movie years ago, had no trouble following it, you know, 
We talked about it afterwards. We had a good, a good chat about it. It's uh, visually stunning, great cast, great music, great costumes, beautiful sets and visual effects. I, I, I rate that the highest <laughs> movie I've seen in a while. So when a, a movie like that comes out, it really is an event and I can't wait till the second part. Some people complained that it stopped in a weird place. They may have a point there, but it's kind of how the story, you know, the book one and book two kind of ends, I think, with, with Paul. I don't remember if it ends with Paul going to the, the Fremen. I think it does. But it really stuck to the story very well. One thing I haven't started watching yet, but I plan to, is the new Wheel of Time series. I just haven't seen it. You know, I just haven't had time to watch it, but I plan to. I have been hearing that the story's been changed a lot, which that's disappointing. I don't know. I have to see for myself. I've only read the first four books of the Wheel of Time. I do plan to keep reading that eventually. <laughs> no pressure on myself. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. I also wanted to mention that Local Haunts is mentioned in the summary of Ellen Datlow's the best horror of the year that comes out every year. I have several of these volumes, but I had to buy this one too. In the summation, it has a uh, local haunts with notable stories by Andrew Lyle, my friend at Grumpy Andrew's Horror House. I'm really happy for him, as well as Cameron Chaney, of course, I love, and Kevin David Anderson, another wonderful author and booktuber. So I was very proud that we were mentioned and uh, special congratulations to those three authors. It's nice to be a uh, recognized like that. And I have high hopes for Serve Cold. So yeah, these look really great together. And some people have been asking about the uh, hardback version. Now Amazon offers that. I did look into it. It's a little complicated because I have to change the sizes of the, uh, they don't make the hardback in this size. So it would mean reformatting the cover and the text. And that takes a while, but yeah, eventually I think it would be fun to do that with maybe both of these and do like a collector's item. And I also heard that a new Witcher's coming out. Very excited about that. I know Batilda is too. Sorry, Lily, this was the pillow she was on. So I'll let her get back to that. Anyway, that's what I've been up to. It was great to check in with you guys again. And let me know in the comments below if you read any of the books I've mentioned or have seen Dune or The Wheel of Time. I would love to hear your thoughts. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for stopping by my haunted library and I'll see you soon. Bye.